So, thank you. Excited to be here. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed the barbecue yesterday. No hangovers. <laughs> Um, excited to be here, and I first want to introduce myself a little bit before I do the talk. Uh, I'm Arnold van Weinbergen. I'm a yeah, DevOps consultant, mainly focusing on tooling and architecture implementations with around 15 years of experience. And really, this talk is about my experience in tooling implementations. Uh, father of three kids and really tooling geek and technology aware. I'm working at Devo Team. Oh, you know, uh, I think Devo Team from the stand. But Devo Team is a French company. We are based in 19 countries and we have around 5,000 more colleagues working in the cloud and technology domains. I also want to give you a little bit explanation that this talk is not about my tooling preferences, nor the popular technologies. Uh, you already did the workshops, and it's all about technology these days. But it's a rich set of experiences of my last 15 years. How to look at tooling, how to use the tooling, and how to select your tool chain. And now I will go to my topic outline. First, I want to see the question about that. Everybody knows the title of the talk. Is tooling the answer? Are tools the answer? Setting the scene. After that, we will ha take a look at the radical evolution of the tooling market, what has changed, and what is the impact of the change on all the enterprises where I work. After this, we will go to the definition and we'll look at how we are going to define your tooling strategy. And with the fourth item, you will look at the common pitfalls that can ruin your tooling strategy and your approach. At the end, I will give you a summary of all my key takeaways of the talk. So uh, let's start with setting the scene. Everybody knows this situation when you're in. And tools started already in the ages with the cavemen. And you see a picture of the guy at the left with a tool and he didn't know how to use it. At the right, his brother, he has a tool, he has a goal. He identified his activities. So it's not only the tool, but it's, he's missing some goal some activities to explore. And this is our first step to tooling, to the, let's say, the whole evolution of it. And we all know this situation when we have an outage, when it's going badly wrong with your application, all the operations guys, all the devers have to come together, fighting a major incident with the incident commander on front. And you see they have responsibility. Uh, do you all recognize this situation when you have these problems? No? Yeah. We have the responsibility, but they don't have, they seem to have not the proper tools. Like this morning we had breakfast with a spoon just a little bit like this. I asked, just give me a knife and a fork, and this is easier to eat your lunch. Uh, but it's more. When we look at that picture, they were missing some features, some helpful features. They had a fire hose. But with this big fire, it's maybe better to have some other valuable features available, like a fire copter or something that increases their team performance. The way how to easily and fastly solve the outage. And when we look at tooling today, when we look at the ticketing systems, and we have some companies that use ticketing systems, they asked us to miss the integration of it. And why? 
What is that problem? It's all about the context switching. Changing systems from one display to another, to another system, doing a lot of inefficient rework as an engineer. You want to focus on solving the problem, not on typing an incident in one tool and copying the same information to another tool to do an update for somebody in the JIRA ticket. The whole system does not, does not act as a whole, even when all the integrations are available on the market today. And when we look at that picture, we had two guys. They worked together, but we didn't saw the group. So it could be that they were missing some alignment. And alignment when there's somebody flying around with a firecopter. We really need this part because it's the foundation for the productive collaboration. And after that, it's really clear for them what their responsibilities are during the outage. Now, when looking at this, we can conclude that also the organization plays an important role in the tool chain strategy. How are we going to set up the tool chain? And this is not only the development tool chain, it's also about the parts, about the business parts. The business also uses tools, and we have ticketing tools, finance tools. They need to be integrated together. And if we look at this, that the organization plays an important role, it's always Conway's laws that comes in. Also with tooling, it's about the organization that defines the whole structure in their tooling. Look at banking, look at strict uh, financial institutes with a lot of handovers, uh, wait times, and yeah, it's really slowing down the whole delivery. But what changed this way, and what has changed in the coming uh, in these years when DevOps came around? It was a real radical evolution of the tooling market. So, and it's not only the tooling that matters, it's, it's mission critical. And it's really independent of every industry. So when you look at tools, when you look at industries, it doesn't matter if it's a manufacturing, logistics, or an IT company. It delivers crucial automation, support and housekeeping capabilities. It really helps companies to improve, to deliver quality, better usability to the customers. Like Coolblue is using the packet machine for sustainability, to have smaller packages that are easier deliverable to the customer. And yes, we know all the things about Tesla. They had some excessive autom automation. And again, some peoples were involved. It's even like that, that the robots at Tesla are slowing down because of the fact if they are doing the wrong procedures, there's a lot of damage, financial damage to recover. So that's why the robots in that factories are programmed slower than they can perform. But how is this all come together and what is the history about this? because we all know about the assembly line dream. Lean came in and we always wanted to have nice tasks, small automation, easier, everything automated. But for development, it's not that way. For IT, it's not that way in some parts. It's really development is prototyping. And DevOps is one of the movements that's helped, including continuous delivery to improve the tool chain and to harmonize these two worlds together. And when looking at it now, it really helps us to go to a better way how do we can yeah, implement better ways to do the more release orchestration, like having a sort of our aircraft carrier to spin off your releases and update all systems. But this whole picture changed the whole market approach, because all these assembly line dreams from the vendors 
the old vendors, the old thinking vendors change. Because we don't, we are not, let's say, happy anymore with one big suite that tries to solve all your problems in one solution. We're really looking at the best in breed approach and focus on flexibility and on the goal. The goal that we want to achieve. Look at Elastic, look at Sysdic. Sysdic is a tool that has a specific focus. And it's delivering direct value instead of bringing you a full package suite that gives you all the opportunities that go want to get it all. So if you look at that change, the current vendors has to reinvent themselves. And the automation has become de facto standard. So you see that all the tools, development tools, but also business tools <coughs> had to adopt this, had to adopt this automation need, like financial systems uh, had to adopt this way of tooling. And when, what was the reaction on the market? It grows from 100 to around 1,000 vendors. Look at all the overviews of tools for monitoring, for example. It's growing and growing. I think at this conference we saw two new tools. Sysdic, rather now growing. Uh, it's growing and growing. New tools are, let's say, started every day to optimize. Going back to IT, tools play an important role in the whole life cycle of product development. So it's both the business owner that wants to see his tool and the product teams. But they have different needs. They have different needs, but they have the same goal, the same objectives that they want to. It's the customer, the business that they need to drive. But for us, and it's, it's let's say, IT, it can be complex, like IT, and it's not getting simpler. But it's the goal that's always and cannot always be clear, and we rapidly change the market with tools, technology, but systems change. And when we look at the business, it's all about storing the enterprise knowledge and really acting as a proxy for the enterprise processes to activate and execute. That's their need, and they really want to generate valuable information about their enterprise assets. <coughs> Whereby the IT teams really want to store everything on the version control and have repeatable, reliable process for the software delivery. They want to eliminate all these handovers, all these repeatable tasks. And as outcome, we want to deliver high quality products because we, IT, in this digital area, is really customer facing. And if you look at this, we have to support different flavor of teams. So there's no ID of one pipeline. There is, you always will have a team that has their own development pipeline that's doing some specific domain work. So be aware of that. The basic goal is to minimize this complexity and make the teams, the DevOps teams, the teams that are building the products, their life easier and to empower them and to do some little way of abstraction of the services that you are delivering to them. Why is that important? Because every effort that you put into it and the much energy you get out, the teams are getting more effective and effectiveness is combined result of freedom and responsibility. This is really the driver of the teams and if you're team is not having the freedom and not the responsibility, you will still have a team of people that are just waiting and doing their task. So at the end, tools have to support both the business and the product teams. So now that I gave you a little summary and introduction of what is the title, why are we doing it? How does it look like? The old tooling strategy and the change. How are we going to define our tooling strategy? And for this, 
I first want to uh, take a look at the integrated tool chains and what the definition is of a DevOps tool chain. <coughs> what is the definition? A tool chain is a set or a combination of tools that aid in the delivery, development, and management of applications through the software lifecycle as coordinated by the organization with goals to increase quality, resiliency, and preferable using the DevOps practices. You see all these themes are coming together. I already colored the ingredients that we have to use, the keywords that we need in it. And when I look at it, it's the organization that has some objectives, some goals that drive their success, their growth. We have the use cases that we need that are building your process, your life cycle. We have some tools, some technology that we use to build up the tool chain, to support it, to make it possible. And we have important metrics to improve. And it's not only improving your development work, but also improving the efficiency of delivering new products to the customer. So when we are starting to define this life cycle, we see all these ingredients coming together, defining this and getting all this data in. And we are going to select some of these tools. And for this, it's not about just copying an architecture or selecting one suite. So there are some points of attention or some principles to look at. And these are the things that yeah, really can matter in a good implementation. And uh, for my view, this is really about implementing an enterprise tool chain. So you can't please everyone. There are teams, they have their own pipeline in front of the, let's say, the pipeline that is used to do the release orchestration part. So don't be afraid of that. Apply some rules like the 80-20 rule to be aware that other teams can connect and they can use your system. And to do that, you have to provide an open ecosystem. Teams can easily use your services, your platform, and your platform must be then more modular, easy, extendable, and reusable instead of tightly coupled. And yes, make it easy consumable. APIs, services, don't work with tickets that your team is going to type in all the stuff. I think the teams nowadays are smart enough to do it themselves. Give them good help and support and they will survive. So again, provide the open APIs. The last important part is that we will evolve by learning and adoption. Looking at it, this is really about observing the tools and looking at the teams, how they use it. Don't go to the vendor and look at their teams. First, look at your teams and drive adoption by innovation of your fellow, fellow teams and fellow companies that are using and doing the same digital battle. Last point to don't forget is the support and the education. <coughs> Introduce a tooling team or as we uh, development support team or a DevOps automation team with the correct ownership. Use smoothly onboarding, supporting boot camps don't push everything to them, but make it easy, accessible, and adoptable. And again, self-supporting documents are important. Manuals, explanations, examples. And the main goal after this is happy customers. One of the things I want to put, a, let's say, a disclaimer on is when vendors come to you and tell you, 
there is a tool that will make you DevOps. Uh, just want to state you, there is no tool that makes you DevOps. So this is one of the things to remember. So that we now see the tools and the things, how to define it. We see all the functions in the different areas that are coming together. Like the business has its own area, development, operations, but how are we going to support all these stakeholders? Because they have things in common. They have overlapping areas. They are delivering value goals for the company. When you look at this, the integrations matter to optimize all the feedback loops in your chains. If it's going from financial planning to acceptance criteria to your build area, to your testing, to your acceptance criteria in your source code repository, it's all about mapping all these integrations that you need in your tool chain. And when all these integrations are there, you are generating a lot of data. And don't waste this data because it's really interesting. So reuse all this data and share it using Confluence tools, Jira tools, but also using monitoring tools to respond, Slack tools, chat ops, to interact, to notify, to respond. So, and at the end, leverage machine learning capabilities for that. At the end, I want to go through some pitfalls that I've seen in the last periods, uh, 15 years that I work in the IT of companies that were pushing a lot of technology without adoption, top-down approach, Really, technology push, no input. Is that something that's really productive? Does this work? Uh, we saw it in the example, this will not work. Also not with the firemen. They need better tools, and they have in that area better, uh, more requirements, more features to deliver better on time. Tools that have no user community. Tools that are running. That does not match the operational reality. I know a big electric company, uh, let's say a company in the Netherlands, that implemented a big vendor solution. It was a mass instruction from the head office. Uh, they implemented it, but nobody used it. And it was around 20% of the whole data center was running without any use case, any use. So this is really a disposal of value of your tooling. Tools that are handled like a black box. It's another situation that I got in. I had to integrate a tool, a security seam tool, and it was boxed. We had to integrate it, but the vendor said, yeah, sorry, we have to do everything within it. Do this and the whole impact of this area, we had to find it out ourselves, and the project has delayed. And it's not good for the teams who use such tools. So this is the change what you also see in the networking, that it's more going to the white labeled, white box tools. The fourth one, the last one, is really about the closed ecosystem. The old ways of thinking, afraid of innovation. People that think that their current way of working is the way and the tools that they now use are their tools and they keep on it. Be aware that it's changing over time and that's fast. Every year you have better tools that are better and improve your goals over time. So looking at this and summarize the key takeaways, I think that the tooling strategy is an important accelerator. 
not only for you, but also for the whole enterprise. Don't forget that it's a big area and it's not only about pure IT, but also uh, all the other facts around it, like compliance, finance, and operational stuff. Identify the use cases, extracted from also the objectives that the organization wants to achieve, that what creates value, and support and service the teams instead of delivering a service that is not supported at all. Use your fellow teams, fellow companies, instead of doing a tool selection with your vendors. Learn from them and then look at the vendors. I think your teams are your, I always say, these are your diamonds, these are your best friends. They know what they want to do. They are the experts in delivering their product. The other one is that the tooling engineering team was unburdened product teams with tool chain, compliancy and maintenance work and all that stuff. It's really focusing on the product that you're going to deliver and the tools are there for you to support you, to bring some work to production, to deliver the events to the operational bridge and to deliver you focus on your work, on your product. And be aware that the tools are self-supportable don't implement tools that have an approach that they always need to put in a ticket that your team has to solve it or has to implement it. Use the platform approach and use services instead of yeah, tickets. And have easy, approachable documentation. And at the end, take the benefits of the collected metrics to improve your support and learn from the usability of your system. Uh, most companies deploy support applications, but when they open the tools like Jira, there's no contact info in their dashboard, no telephone number, no email address to contact. And uh, when they have a problem, for example, in Jira, and they want to ask support what is going on, they first have to look the whole intranet before going to the team. Please integrate these kind of messages using Slack or inside the tools to make it easy, accessible, and supportable. So this was my talk, and I hope you uh, enjoyed it. Any questions for Arnold? Oh, yeah. uh, thank you. Yep. Uh, you um, uh, mentioned that it's important uh, for a successful tooling strategy to have um, a user community uh, for the tools within your company. Yeah. Do you have any uh, pointers or tips to uh, how to create an active user community? Uh, for creating the user community, you really have to go into the teams. Uh, this is the different approach than in the old days, pushing it down. My tips are go and visit the teams, work with them, look and learn from them, uh, and use all your, let's say, all your things, hints that you learn to integrate in this tooling search, to really learn, observe, instead of just select and do the technical discussion. Uh, and most of the time you will see that smart teams are already doing the things that you want to do. So it's just uh, reuse the company knowledge that's inside because I think like here, there are a lot of smart engineers here and I think it's a waste within a company to sell it, uh, let's say to buy a tool. Maybe there is a team that's already using such functionality and setting up this whole community at just making marketing, exposing and giving credits and team awards like uh, what we did, for example, is uh, doing a lottery and teams had to and could, let's say, vote on their tooling 
what they like or things, how they solve the problem. And we had a platform, a social media platform. And when the first teams, they got a cake, for example. And this is really, in some cases, a driver for teams to discuss and to improve and to let them be, let's say, part of the decision of the tool chain. And I think that is the crucial thing in it. Let them be part of it instead of pushing it down from architecture. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Can you throw it over there? Nice throw. Hello, hello. So you mentioned that uh, having a top-down approach on tooling <coughs> is not the best, but how do you get around having a top-down approach to implementing the culture? If I, uh, like yeah. In a big company, if CEO yeah. doesn't say DevOps. No. <laughs> It's, it's in some companies that it's, uh, let's say, the approach of talking to these people. Yeah? It's, the CTO says, we have to do it that way. Uh, but I think that uh, the CTO, a good CTO, should be open for the teams to talk with him and discuss on these topics and not be the guy that is uh, pointing down, these are the tools that you have to use. Because in my world, the CTO should help you guys with solving these issues, that he really feels the pain when you are using tools that you're, when you're missing the features that you like, like you're having, for example, uh, Jira, but you're missing some stages in your workflow or you're missing some features with some feedback loops to your code repository and they say, yeah, we don't need it get him one week in the office typing all your information from Jira to Git, and then he will change, definitely. Do but that's my hint, just go for it. Do you find that uh, more organizations with strong hierarchies are moving to more flat management structures to uh, accommodate DevOps and other types of methodologies? Yeah, in the Netherlands, um, my experience is in the Netherlands, and in the UK and in France, and the Netherlands, it's easier to go to the, let's say, to the technical CTO. In the UK, it's possible, uh, but it requires you to be more, let's say, direct. They know uh, when you're Dutch that you're more direct. <laughs> and in France, for example, it's much more difficult. This is first doing a sort of migration of the culture, implement DevOps instead of going directly to this approach. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Oh, yeah. no. Give them applause.